been so hard, very hard. Uh, never, I think in my in my life would I have imagined that uh, we would have something like this, a catastrophe of uh, an unequal disaster. I would like to find the uh, Quijano family, Coloma family, and Villegas families, which is three more, three days now that uh, everybody's looking for them. There are 89 fatalities that have been measured. Now, we were here just two days ago, and the number was smaller, and it's going to continue to rise. We want to brace people for that. We have to go with caution. There are heavy metals there. There are toxic states where the houses have come down and the businesses have come down. The recommendations are to avoid those structures because they could still fall on people, and we've lost too much life already. There are propane tanks there. There's really a lot of hazard. We still have people staying at the airport. People are making decisions as we've been distributing food in great amounts. For those who have seen, those are the kind of the pictures where thousands and thousands of pounds of water and food have come. But we have additional military support that has arrived. Fifty National Guardmen have arrived today. You'll see many more coming in the days ahead. And that's important because when we have those actual National Guard individuals in service and also some active duty military and we're going to meet these gentlemen today it makes it more possible for us to protect certain areas so people can uh, do their work our entire island has been devastated by this but um, uh, none more so than the individuals who are still looking for loved ones or know that they've already lost their loved ones and um, so it's very somber inside 
So when people arrive at the center, um, they're greeted at the door, they're welcomed in. Um, we take the opportunity to ask them what are their needs, what, how can we help them. We get them seated with a counselor right away uh, and determine what their needs are and help them from there. We are still very much in um, life-saving, life-sustaining, right? We have a number of people that have been displaced and we want to make sure that we're getting them the support that they need. We want to find them what their um, immediate lodging needs are going to be, but we also know people are hurting, and so we want to get them the mental health, as the governor mentioned, that they need as they're starting to process this. As we continue to move on, we have to make sure that this is safe. Uh, as we see some of these structures that are still standing, our urban search and rescue teams are marking them to whether they're structurally safe or not. We need to continue to protect people to make sure that they don't go into a building and then it suddenly collapses even though there's walls standing. So really important that we make sure that we're assessing the safety of anything that is still standing. There were already 80 fatalities. It's going to rise. It will certainly be the, the worst natural disaster Hawaii ever faced. It may be the worst fire that America ever faced by the time it's done. Uh, we can only wait and really support those who are living. Our focus now is to reunite people where we can and get them housing and get them health care uh, and then turn to rebuilding. So We, we do want people to know we're heartbroken that the tragedy occurred here. We've had tragedies like this on the neighbor islands before, like in Hilo with the tsunami long ago. And it's hard for communities that are this tight and this small to deal with this. So we want people to seek mental health care uh, if they're feeling desperate. How long do they train before? They train, it depends on the dog, but about a year and a half, typically. Yeah. Supposed to look at, yeah. so that it has been happening throughout the day, yeah. and they're just continuing on and then move forward. Tuesday evening, the 45-foot response boat medium crew arrived on scene and rescued 17 survivors from the waters in the vicinity of Lahaina Harbor, with all survivors reported to be in stable condition. So I think you're familiar with the incredible winds uh, that were impacting Lahaina that night, um, reports of up to 60 miles per hour. Um, so our crews did encounter uh, those winds um, and some rough seas as a result of that. Um, and there was smoke um, and fire uh, near the, near the uh, water, uh, but they were fortunate to have uh, been there during the rescues at a time when the smoke lifted for them to be able to see the people who needed to be rescued. Um, but it was, um, it was a difficult, a very challenging situation for our small boat crews uh, from Station Maui. Uh, the helicopters that were launched uh, were actually not able to approach uh, closely enough during the, the worst of the fire to see through the smoke. Uh, in the course of responding, uh, they encountered uh, victims that were in the water and also um, on the seawall. Um, and some of them, they assisted simply in transport uh, to our first responder partners that were there in Lahaina who were able to evacuate them. still out here it's time to go if anybody's still out here it's time to go it's time to go if anybody's still out here it's time to go
I work on the Scotch Mist 2 sailing charter. Um, do two hour cruises out of the harbor, uh, out of Lahaina Harbor, historic Lahaina Harbor. And uh, I, was on, I was the last one off the dock when the firestorm came through the banyan tree and took everything with it. And I just ran out to the beach and I ran south and I just helped everybody I could along the way. You gotta know when you can. Alright, that's our last dumb video on this pier today. Bye, right, Scotch Mist. Hope you're still there. Stay boat. course you're basically shooting our burning house right through the camera lens right there or what's left of by far yeah beyond any tsunamis or any other tropical storms that have come through just yeah by a hundred times COVID everything <laughs> for our small town at least yeah yeah Um, this is our first time coming back and like actually knowing that our house burned down. We haven't really known anything for the last couple of days because there's no information coming through. We have, since we have no power, no cell service, no Wi-Fi, we're getting bits from car radio, but nobody really knows until they can make it in here whether their houses are standing or not. I feel like because the winds were so high because of the hurricane that it happened really fast. There wasn't even time for like officials to come around and tell you to evacuate. They were up Lahaina Luna obviously evacuating people there, but nobody came into our complex until the flames were here and we were getting out and then a fire truck was coming in. So there wasn't, it was kind of like left 